All right. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for logging in. Uh, I see that we have a couple folks joining us. Uh, I want to say welcome. Seeing a couple familiar names on there. Gary Newman, hello. Uh, Anna Frost, welcome. Elizabeth Pedrick. Uh, Phoebe Rays, thanks for joining. I see people uh, sort of slowly logging on, so thank you very much uh, for that. Um, we haven't officially started yet, but I'm just going to do a little housekeeping now. This is a webinar, um, and so uh, most people's screen uh, won't be showing. Um, so I'm going to ask everybody to please use the Q&A feature if you have any questions. Uh, the chat feature should be enabled um, should you need to, to chat any uh, anywhere. And I believe that we will be uh, sending some messages or if there's any uh, reminders or links that we need to post, they'll come to you through the chat. Um, so I have 10.01. Uh, and so let's get started. This, uh, this program is set to begin at 10. So I'm going to officially start. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I am Romeo Arietta, your Maroon Realtor CEO. And I want to thank you for being here today. As always, uh, I want to thank uh, the membership for allowing me the privilege and honor of representing the Marin Realtors. I'm, I have a special milestone that, that I just crossed, um, and that is uh, in January, I hit uh, five years as your association CEO, and I continued uh, I continue to be honored to serve uh, the membership of this association. Um, at installation, President Joe Burns' theme was charting the course. And I was thinking about this, and there's that old saying that calm seas don't make good sailors. And our association has weathered a couple storms in the last few years. However, I'm proud to say that uh, with the direction of our volunteer leadership uh, and their hard work and the hard work of our dedicated staff, the business and operations of your professional association remain strong. We look forward to a full year of valuable programming, and I'm particularly glad to see uh, committee meetings uh, and a full calendar uh, back at the association. Before we get started, and I turn it over to your president, I would like to say thank uh, to our sponsor, uh, Homa Rizuli, Mutual of Omaha Mortgage. Uh, Homa, would you like to say a quick word? Sure. Good morning, everyone. I'm Homa Rasuli. I'm a reverse mortgage specialist with Mutual of Omaha. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to be with you all today. Hope everyone is doing well. I assist homeowner age 55 and older of how to leverage their housing wealth for better financial outcomes throughout their retirement. Show them the tool to create sustainable, sustainable cash flow to improve their liquidity and lifestyle and peace of mind, which we all do when we are aging. With the reverse mortgage, we can do a lot of different way of financing. We can refinance their existing mortgage, so no more monthly mortgage payment required. We can pull line of credit based on their equity to buy a new house or to buy a vacation home or investment home. We can get them a line of credit so can they have a line of credit available and imagine if you have a person who is right-sizing, downsizing, selling their home and have seven or $800,000 cash from the proceed of their existing, selling their existing home and wants to buy a new house, then instead of spending all their cash, they can spend one-time down payment with no monthly mortgage payment required and buy a new house because you are empowering their purchasing power. So if they have $800,000, they want to buy a million dollar home, they only put one time down payment of $500,000 down and get a reverse mortgage and then create a great portfolio for themselves as well. I'm a phone call away. I'm right here in Marin County. 
I've been doing reverse mortgages for the last 17 years. And before that, I was uh, to manage branches for Wells Fargo Bank for almost 30 years. So I've been around and I love to help you all and help your clients for a better outcome. So please give me a call with any question and thank you for having me today. Okay, thank you, Hoa. Um, I'm going to take this opportunity to introduce our Marin Realtors 2024 president, Joe Burns, who will lead us through the business of today's meeting. And so I am turning it over to our president. Thank you, Romeo. And good morning, everybody. Yes, I am Joe Burns, and I am your 2024 president. And it's been a great year. And it's only March. I mean, this is fantastic. Um, as your president, I hereby call this annual meeting of the corporation, which is required by the California Corporations Law. So this is official meeting. I now call it to order the banging of the gavel. Coco's probably going to bark now because someone's at the door. So it's an honor to be here and update you on all that's been accomplished so far, 2024. We've been working on a lot of great things. And since our last meeting in January, we've uh, had multiple meetings. We've been working on quite a few things and you'll be hearing today from uh, part of our business opportunity portion is um, hearing from our treasurer, Tracy Thirkoff. Hey, Tracy. Hey. First, I want to recognize the entire 2024 board of directors. They are Anna Frost, president-elect, Michelle Dodd, secretary, Tracy Thirkoff, treasurer, and Sylvia Berry, our immediate past president. The directors are Sarah Downs, Ben Faber, Jason Holmes, Drew Howes, Joaquin Garcia, Tobias Green, April Smith, Garrett Burdick, Susan Flandermeyer, Elizabeth Pedrick, and Matt McPhee. It's been a pleasure so far this year to work with these individuals. Um, their leadership that they provide you, our members, is the best there is. I thank each of you for your service. And uh, we look forward to nine more months of a great 2024. Now we're going to hear from aforementioned Tracy Thierkoff, our treasurer on our budget update. Tracy. Thanks, Joe. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm Tracy Thierkoff, your 2024 treasurer. And I just have a brief report on the association's finances. At the end of 2023, Marin Realtors had 100 excuse me, 1,377 realtor members and 38 affiliate members. That's a 4% drop from our 2023 year-end total of 1,321 realtors and 45 affiliate members. We ended the year with a net deficit of $81,771. There was a budgeted deficit of $67,267. This was mainly due to staff changes, legal fees, and office updates. However, at the end of 2023, we had 10 and a half months of reserves on hand. So that puts the association in a good position to cope with unexpected pressures or take advantage of unforeseen opportunities. Um, and I know we are considering several investments to benefit our members. As always, copies of our financial reports are available for review at the Marin Realtors office in San Rafael. That concludes my report. Thank you, Tracy. Now you can see why I'm talking about being so proud of this board uh, and our amazing staff for putting this, this together and having our financial success. You know, just a couple of months ago, we were really um, cautious and somewhat concerned about what this year might look like, uh, given all the news and and about our industry but what i'm seeing is our realtors are stepping up uh you're collaborating together you are um, engaging in so many things that are happening at the association and i really appreciate that and i appreciate our staff romeo francesca andy brianna aaron and craig um it's just been fabulous to work with you this year as well as keeping us on track in what would be turbulent times and you are calming our seas for us. We still have more wins ahead, wins and wins ahead. So thank you to our amazing staff. With that, 
I am going to officially close our annual meeting of the corporation. It is now adjourned. Again, if you have any questions, please send them in the chat or send them to Romeo. And now we're going to get on to some fun business. <clears throat> like, what are some of the changes that have been happening? And a big change that you will see is our new website. So if you are there on webinar Zoom land with a pen and a paper, write this down, marinrealtors.org. That's the website you're going to want to put back into your browser so that you can always find the association online. We all have the old address in our in our uh, browsers and we were pulling up the wrong address. This is the right one. It's a fabulous new website. Your board and, uh, and committees have been working on this for well over a year and it is interactive. It will have a fantastic, it has a fantastic calendar that will be updated and it is uh, something to look at. So again, Make sure you have marinrealtors.org. And on this website, you will see our strategic plan. And our strategic plan was updated this year, or I'm sorry, in 2023, uh, under the guidance and leadership of immediate past president, president Sylvia Berry, for a three year document that we use to guide our decision making. Um, and you can see here that we are advocates for the right to own property and industry excellence. We're truly allies that guide our members and consumers through Marin's evolving real estate landscape. And our core values include trust, competency, inspiration, forward thinking, leadership, collaboration, integrity, vision, and inclusion. We do look at these words when we are working on behalf of our uh, membership in our board meetings. We set up our four goals, which you can see here, from inclusion to promoting educational resources, bringing vibrant new uh, voices to our industry, and communicating with the public to demystify the real estate industry. And we need to do that continually. I want to bring up some upcoming events that we have. You have been hearing a lot about our YPN mixer. Your professional mixer, your professional network mixer will be March 14th. That's up at Finnegan's in Novato, right on Grant Street. Fabulous Irish restaurant and bar. We will have some Guinness served. Our sponsor is Redwood Credit Union and Laureen Barnes team there at Redwood CU. Thank you. Um, everybody's invited. It doesn't matter if you're young or old or how you feel. If you have a positive attitude, please come by. Uh, and you'll be, look, you'll be seeing more events on our YPN coming up as well. We also will have a speaker series continuing this year. And our next speaker series will include Max Corton from the Marin Parks and Open Space. That will be on April 9th. Max runs a fabulous department with our county that provides option uh, tons of uh, opportunities in parks, open space, recreation. This is one of those areas that will help your clients. You can help your clients understand the qualities of life in Marin. Just like today's presentation with education, our recreational and, and hiking and biking opportunities are really important to our clients, both buyers and sellers. So you'll want to lean into this. Again, on the education uh, train, we also have the San Rafael High School Tour coming up on April 16th. You have some QR codes there to click on with your camera. Make sure you can sign up for those. And uh, we'd love to see you out there. We have again this year, our very special CAR, California Association of Realtors Legislation Day on April, I'm sorry, May 1st. This is a great opportunity for all members and I encourage you to lean in. If you can go to this all day event up in Sacramento, you will learn so much both about real estate and how real estate industry interacts with <clears throat> the legislation. So please look at this little video and consider attending. The California Association of Realtors Annual Legislative Day is coming. Join us to meet with your state legislators and advocate for realtor priorities. We need to create pathways to home ownership for all Californians and continue to protect private property rights. You'll also get to hear from changemakers in California, network with thousands of realtors from across the state, Advocate for policy to support increased home ownership. Let's make our realtor voice loud and proud. 
Be sure to join us in Sacramento on May 1st. And stay tuned for additional details for our Legislative Day block party happening on April 30th. It's a lot of fun. <clears throat> Excuse me. And just a reminder, your treasurer and our Budget and Finance Committee have arranged funds for this event. So we will support you going up to Sacramento. And uh, again, it's May 1st. It's a fantastic trip. I hope to see you there. Finally, some of the things that your uh, membership benefits provide are very important. This year is a code of ethics year. Now we use code of ethics every year. We have ethics every day, but every three years, we need to renew that education requirement before the 31st of December. This is one of those years. So I want you to, again, write this down, member services at marinrealtors.org, member services. You can send there your, any questions you have, your certificates, if you've already completed, and how to take the course. That's the code of ethics. We also have NAR providing free ABR, that's the accredited buyer's representative course. Um, you should be getting information from that on our website. We'll also have it in our Monday rundown. This accredited program will give you a uh, credit initials after your name that shows you have completed this course under NAR. And finally, if you have to renew this year, and I've done this before, you can do it through CAR for free. The 45 hours of, I mean, the uh, renewal program through CAR, CAR is fabulous. It's free. You take advantage of that benefit. Again, it's well worth the, the dues you pay cover a lot of expenses you would otherwise have. And finally, some really good news, as you heard in my Monday rundown yesterday, we have exceeded our goal of raising over $25,000 for Homeward Bound. This was a big lift on our membership's part. I wanna thank everybody who gave, including our immediate past president, Sylvia Berry, for setting up this relationship. Homeward Bound is housing all veterans that are homeless in Marin. They are building units that will accomplish that based on the numbers we have right now, and it is fabulous. They have a lot of services there. Please attend uh, an event that we have coming up that you'll get to see uh, Homeward Bound in action. And again, thank you for your support there. We've done so much this year. It's already March and we have more to go. But one of our big goals this year was to continue to bring valuable information to our membership. And we're doing that today. I was able to uh, hear Dr. Jonathan Eldridge from the College of Marin speak <clears throat> a couple months ago. I was um, surprised at how much I didn't know about the college, how much they provide in opportunities for our community across the board, all members of our community. And uh, I thought it'd be very important for our membership to hear what Dr. Eldridge has to say. So our keynote speaker again, Dr. Jonathan Eldridge, President Marin, he serves as the college's 11th superintendent president. He came to the college in 2013 and most recently served as the college's assistant superintendent, vice president for student learning and success. Sorry about the bug. Dr. Eldred supports a diverse group of faculty, staff, and administrators to create a truly coherent and integrated education program for his students. <laughs> Under his leadership, the college has developed and expanded, nurtured partnerships with 10,000 Degrees, Canal Alliance, Marin Community Foundation, Marin County Office of Higher Education, all local school districts, Sonoma State University, Dominican University, Marin Economic Forum, and many others to allow the college to deliver more fully on its mission of providing equitable opportunities and fostering success for all members of our diverse community. Dr. Eldridge received a bachelor's degree in history with a minor in political science from Central Washington University, graduating from CW's William, CWU's William O. Douglas Honors College, his master's degree in student affairs and higher education from Colorado State University, and his doctorate in organizational change and leadership from University of Southern California. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in welcoming Dr. Jonathan Eldridge. Doctor? <laughs> Thank you, Joe. I, uh, I, appreciate, um, I appreciate that uh, introduction, and I'm very happy to be here and to share a few things about the college with everyone today. I'm going to start by sharing my screen so that you can look at something other than just me. 
uh, for the next few minutes as I speak. All right. Uh, so uh, again, this is a great opportunity for me to talk with all of you about the college. I understand at the end, if I am not too long winded, we'll have a few minutes for some questions in the chat and I'm happy to answer any questions folks have. I'll also have my contact information at the end of the presentation. Uh, so you can reach out to me directly if you have questions uh, or need anything from the college. Also, um, I will make sure that Romeo has this presentation. There's not a lot of content in it, a lot of visuals just to give you a sense of what's happening at the college. But if you'd like that, we'll make that available as well. Uh, so, you know, College of Marin is the community's college. We are the public higher education in Marin County, and we take that responsibility seriously. There are 17 public school districts, K-12, TK-12, plus private institutions, uh, and there's Dominican University. University of Redlands has a satellite campus at what used to be the seminary in uh, San Anselmo, but we are the only public higher education in Marin, um, and as a singular entity, uh, we take very seriously our opportunity and our responsibility to engage the community in important conversations uh, and to meet those needs, as Joe said. Um, he also mentioned that we have so many partnerships. And this is just a smattering of some of the partnerships uh, that we have, um, along with a, uh, in the upper right-hand corner, a rendering of our uh, soon-to-be-completed uh, Bolinas Field Station uh, out in Bolinas to, to support marine uh, research and other things. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a bit. Um, but I did want to say that, you know, we are only successful when we work in partnership uh, with everyone in Marin, uh, because uh, our mission is to provide equitable opportunities and foster success for all members of our diverse community. And we can't do that in isolation. Uh, and that's why we rely on and we support all of these organizations and many others. Um, and as I speak through a few examples of things that the college is doing, um, you'll see the, uh, the organizations, the entities, the institutions that are represented here um, uh, coming up again and again throughout. So uh, in order to fulfill our mission, uh, we focus on a number of different segments. Um, we have concurrent enrollment uh, of about 600 high school students every semester taking classes with us while they're also taking classes in high schools, and that's across the county. We're ramping up efforts to expand that. We're in discussions with Novato Unified School District about a middle, middle college model, um, and we're really looking at ways to get more high school students engaged. That's for a variety of purposes. Some students aren't sure that college is right for them, this is a great opportunity for them to test the waters. Others know that they wanna go directly into a very selective four-year institution, and they understand that taking that advanced calculus class with us is probably a better bet than taking your chances with an AP score uh, by taking an AP class, if it's even offered at their high school, simply because once they complete uh, their coursework with us, that's transcriptable and it's automatically transferable to other institutions. So we have a wide range of high school students taking a variety of coursework, some of it prepping for a uh, four-year or transfer, but a lot of it uh, also includes students uh, working toward uh, particular certificates. So we have a, a partnership where students in high school can get more than halfway to their medical assisting degree and certificate by the time they graduate high school. Then it's a short stay with us and they're out into the workforce. But transfer is a big, part of what we do. That's sort of the, the, the central focus. Um, and we transfer significant numbers of students from Marin every year um, to the UCs, the CSUs, privates, and other schools across the country. Um, we are one of the top transfer schools for Berkeley, um, as well as UC Davis, San Francisco State, Sonoma State, uh, and others. But in the transfer realm, uh, one of the things that we're starting to see is that regardless of what the demographics of our students are, they understand that in many cases, their best chance at getting into a UC is going through College of Marin. As an example, last year, there were uh, over 130,000 applications for about 3,000 freshman slots at UCLA. On the other hand, if a student comes to College of Marin, completes the associate degree for transfer, they're guaranteed into a UC, not necessarily uh, the, the one of their choice. That depends on how well they do and what they take and what their major is. Um, but we are a pathway that basically cuts in half the cost of an undergraduate degree. The other thing I would say is that um, we have a, a learning community on campus um, designed 
for our African American students um, to help them through to transfer and beyond. <clears throat> and while we're one of the smaller California community colleges in overall numbers, we are one of the top five transfer schools for African American students uh, into the UC, which we're very proud of. But as I mentioned before, with our medical assisting, we have a whole series of workforce programs. Uh, and so many students come to us uh, with the idea that they want to get into the workforce and earn money and then perhaps come back and go on for a degree. Uh, but we have tried to innovate in the way in which we deliver those. So we have our associate's degree in nursing and we have a 97% pass rate on the first try for the certification exam of our new nurses getting out in the profession. Um, and we are um, uh, we are in conversation with Kaiser and By the Bay and others on how we can ramp up that program to meet the increasing need for nurses in the workforce. But also certified nursing assistants. We're in partnership with Canal Alliance to get students through a certified nursing assistant home health, health aid program. We're also in partnership with Canal to get students through a construction program. And our construction graduates um, earn on average 20% more in wages at completion of the program than they did coming into the program. And we also have a partnership with Marin Fire, the Fire Foundry Program, which is designed to diversify the fire service. Uh, and that program uh, right now is, uh, be, is hugely successful, but we're looking at what comes next. And that includes leasing one of our buildings at the Indian Valley campus in uh, Novato to Marin Fire, to the county, so that they can have housing for those recruits um, and also use it as seasonal housing uh, for the fire service when there are wildfires in the area. And our goal is to develop that program out further. Um, increasingly, with climate change and other factors, fire science is becoming more complex. Um, there are GPS elements. There are all kinds of different um, uh, elements related to geology and geography um, that are a part of what firefighters need to know moving forward. And we're happy and proud to be a part of that. We also are uh, a provider of education for early childhood ed. Uh, instructors, um, and that is an area in Marin where there's a lot of attention being paid because um, is there's a desperate need for early childhood ed. Now, I say all of this because we also are focused on uh, making sure that all of our students have what they need to be successful, and that's different for every student. Uh, and so as we focus on transfer, as we focus on workforce development, as we focus on our high school students, and also as we focus on English language acquisition, we have nearly 2,000 students from Marin every semester working with us to take non-credit English language courses because they understand, as my friend Omar, the CEO of Canal Alliance says, language acquisition is the foundation for workforce development. Uh, and so we're very proud to be able to offer all of these um, wide range of opportunities for every student in Marin, including lifelong learning opportunities uh, for um, folks who want to come back, whether they take a course um, because they have an interest in a particular subject area, or they want to take a short-term course um, uh, that we offer not for credit, uh, but just as a lifelong learning opportunity. So some of the things you see on the slide here are our learning communities. And we know, because we've done the research, that when students come to College of Marin, if they come in and participate in a summer bridge program um, that really works to make sure they are up to speed on their math and English um, and get them acclimated to the college environment, and then they participate in one of our many learning communities, whether that's focused on the sciences or career exploration or transfer, or as I mentioned before, Emoja or Puente, we find that they are much more successful. Um, they, they take more units um, and they transfer more quickly. You can also see at the top, the COMPASS program. And I wanna take a moment to, to talk about that. Um, this is a program where we go into local high schools. We're in TAM district, we're in San Rafael district, we're getting back into the Novato district. We're starting in the ninth grade. We take first generation low income um, students of color and say, you're going to be a college student right now. We enroll them in a, a college exploration class and then we stick with them and get them into those concurrent courses throughout um, so that by the time they graduate high school, they have a smooth path. It's completely free. And we guarantee if they come to College of Marin after they graduate high school, they come to us, all expenses paid. That, that program is important, though, because that gets us a little bit to our demographics in the county. Right now in Marin Public Schools, 43% of the students in Marin Public Schools are students of color. 
Now, only 11% of the teachers in Marin are teachers of color. Of those 43% of students of color, that demographic, because of longstanding systemic disparities and opportunities and outcomes that are rampant across the educational system in the United States, K-12 and higher ed, only about 40% of those students, if they just go through the public schools, will complete their A to G curriculum. And the A to G curriculum in the high school is that college readiness curriculum that guarantees you a, your ability to go directly into a four-year institution in California. So only about 40% of our first generation and our students of color complete the A to G curriculum. But those students who participate in our Compass program, 77% of them this last year completed their A to G curriculum. So they then had doors open to them that they didn't before. And this is another example of the way we're partnering with folks uh, to make a difference. Um, and as Joe mentioned earlier, you know, one of the things you're focused on is inclusion. And when we think of inclusion and, and equity, we define equity as recognizing those historical and systemic disparities in both opportunity and outcomes, and then directing resources to address those disparities. So our learning communities, Summer Bridge, Compass, many other things are part of what we do uh, to address those disparities. And we've had good success with that. Um, I just have this slide up here uh, to show you that we have a wide range of athletic programs. We've brought back women's water polo now that we have the beautiful new aquatic facility at our Indian Valley campus. Um, but I want to say a, a word while this slide is up about going back to that uh, statistic I said, where only 11% of our teachers in Marin are teachers of color. All students benefit when they learn from a diverse teaching force, when they see different people in leadership roles, when they learn about uh, a curriculum from different perspectives. And so we are in the process of developing an educator of color pathway with Sonoma State University. The way this works is that any student in the uh, Marin County schools who would like to be a teacher is guaranteed admission into the education program at Sonoma State University via College of Marin. So right now, if a ninth grader says, I wanna be a teacher, they can come to College of Marin and on the other end of it, completing their transfer coursework, they're guaranteed to go into the education program at Sonoma State. But we are also working on MOUs with all the local school districts, whereby while they're with us and at Sonoma State, they can have part-time non-certificated work opportunities in the districts, developing networks, taking advantage of professional learning opportunities, earning money along the way, because we're committed to having these students go through and, and be teachers on the other end with zero debt. And at that point in time, the MOU will also specify that districts will guarantee those students an interview when their teaching positions open. In this way, we can grow our own uh, teaching force, replenish our teaching force, and every year districts struggle to find enough teachers with folks who have grown up in Marin, live in Marin, have affinity here. And of course, one thing I'll talk about in a minute is housing, because obviously that's another factor in our ability to retain uh, uh, teachers. So I want to pause for a second uh, and say this, that one of my favorite quotes on education uh, is from Martin Luther King Jr. And Dr. King said, education must enable one to sift and weigh evidence, to discern the true from the false, the real from the unreal, and the facts from the fiction. And in many ways, that is what the tenets of a liberal education are. And that's not liberal as in liberal, conservative, red, blue. That's liberal as in a heaping helping of a broad range of learning opportunities. A liberal education is designed to ensure that we have a citizenry that can uh, conduct meaningful research, that can uh, synthesize ideas, that can think critically, can speak well, can write effectively, can solve problems. Those are the things that employers want and need and all of our programs, regardless of whether we're talking about high school students, transfer, workforce development or otherwise, all of our programs are designed to help students gain those skills across the arts. And we have fabulous programs. In fact, if you haven't checked out Much Ado About Nothing, our current uh, drama offering, uh, it's open over the next couple of weekends. You should check that out across the sciences. Uh, and we have students who are work doing research with NASA and other agencies, and the, the Bolinas uh, Field Station will be a wonderful opportunity. Only one other college in California, community college in California, has a field station. We're very excited about that. We also have an organic farm and garden. 
uh, that is a living laboratory, but it also produces food um, that is given away to students in need and is used as the basis of many of our programs around um, uh, uh, cooking and other things. At the farm, we have a demonstration kitchen that is sponsored by Nugget Markets. We're in great partnership with them. Um, and then we have just a wide array of opportunities on campus for the entire community to enjoy. One of which we're very proud of is our library um, does a common read where we all gather together and read a book um, and then faculty introduce that into the classroom. We have art exhibits and other things relating to it. Now, I would be remiss if I did not mention our amazing facilities uh, at both campuses uh, and the importance of the both Measure C uh, bond program, which completed a number of years ago, and the Measure B bond program, which we are in the midst of now and will be wrapping up in the next couple of years. Those voter supported initiatives um, have allowed us to have state of the art facilities um, that many four year institutions don't have. I would also say, too, that we take pride in the fact that over the course of the, the bond programs, by refinancing strategically along the way, we've saved Marin taxpayers $43 million um, off the cost of what those bonds would have been otherwise. And we are very thankful for the ongoing support from the community, not only with uh, the bond measures, uh, but with their involvement in all that we do. So we are now at a moment in time for the college. And we all know, and some of the things that, that Joe mentioned in terms of your focus areas, um, relate to these. We're at a moment in time where there is there are a lot of seemingly intractable issues. Um, we are in the midst of, in California in particular, it seems, uh, climate change uh, that impacts a lot of the discussions that we have um, in our economy. And so as an institution, we want to think about how is it that we can affect those conversations, such as the climate crisis and climate justice issues, transportation, one of the biggest ways in which we contribute to the climate crisis is through greenhouse gas emissions. And a lot of that is getting people to and from our campuses, particularly because half of our employees live outside the county. Imagine what would happen if they could all live in the county, um, what that would do to reduce transportation issues. Um, we actually have a partnership with uh, Mar Marin Transit, whereby all of our students get free ridership locally on Marin Transit buses, which has been a huge um, assistance to getting students where they need to go. We also provide, we have a zero textbook cost program and open educational resources. We have hundreds of courses where there are zero costs associated with textbooks because of the creativity of the faculty and the hard work of our staff um, to protect uh, the finances of our students. But as we work on these issues, housing, transportation, climate, we do so with a real opportunity ahead. Because as I mentioned before, we are the community's college. And the Communities College, College of Marin, was founded in April of 1926. So two years from now, we will be celebrating our centennial. We'll start in the fall of 2025 it, with, for that academic year, and our centennial celebration will run about 18 months. But as we think about our centennial, we're really starting to think, how do we reflect on and honor the past, the, the impact of the college, um, the native Miwoks who came before, um, those folks who built the college into what it is, the community that we have supported, our many alumni who have done amazing things across the country, and toward our alumni, we'll say this, that just before the pandemic, academic influence ranked us as the number one community college in California and the fifth in the nation, largely based on our alumni and our faculty and others and their impact and influence um, in, their, uh, in their respective professions. As we approach the centennial, it's a great opportunity for us to re-engage alums, to engage the community in meaningful conversations about what the college can be moving forward. This happens to coincide with our next college plan and strategic plan. It also coincides with the completion of our Center for Student Success, which is the capstone project for our Measure B bond program. This will be the new home for the library, for our learning communities, for classroom space, and for many other things. You can see the construction is underway on the left. If you have gone down College Avenue in Kent Field, you'll see it uh, coming up rapidly. And on the right, you see a rendering of what, it, uh, what a portion of it will look like when it's done. So all of these things will coalesce in 2026. Our new college plan, um, our centennial, the completion of our bond program, uh, 
And as I said, it really creates an opportunity for us to invite the community to help us not only reflect on and celebrate our past, but to define our future. What is it that college can be for the community that we have not yet been or that we need to do more with? Because our success means that we are meeting the educational needs of all members of our diverse community. And the educational needs in Marin County are varied and diverse. And that means we need to be a lot of things to a lot of people. So understanding from the community what those are and then holding those up as we hit our centennial and define how we want to launch into our second hundred years um, is a really unique moment in time that we're very excited for. And we're going to be asking questions. What if the college became net zero greenhouse gas emissions? What if the college were able to work with other districts locally to create educator housing? What if we were able to address transportation issues um, and ensure more equitable outcomes for our students? To do this, we need to further embrace the role of the college, not only as an exceptional educational institution that helps students meet their educational goals, but also a hub of important conversations of innovation and change. And I welcome any comments and thoughts you have on that. You can see on the screen, you can reach out to me via email. I'm also on Instagram if you'd like to follow me. Uh, and I periodically uh, post what I've been up to on behalf of the college. And with that, I just again want to thank all of you and thank Joe for the invitation uh, to be here today. Wow, that was spectacular. And it <laughs> reminds me, uh, in fact, I think it was <clears throat> Dr. Eldridge on on Martin Luther King's birthday, or or at least the day before after that uh, you spoke to the Marin Forum and your quote then was uh, was as special then as it is today on the need for education. Thank you for putting a, a spin on, a new spin on college and we're in. I think everybody who, who listened to this can find something in that that can immediately benefit a client, a conversation, something in the community that reminds the people that we talk to what a valuable asset we have for our entire community. Um, I, I I have a good idea that someday I'll be taking a class or two at the Marin College. And and I don't I, know if I, I know qualify. someone I know someone who can help you register for that. So <laughs> I don't know if I'll qualify for any of the Marin or sporting teams, but I'll I'll sure give that a try as well. If you have eligibility, we'll uh, give you a, a tryout. <laughs> Romeo, do we have any questions for the president? I am not seeing any questions in our question and answer feature. This is a good time as any to ask uh, our uh, people who are joining us. If they have a question, please, you can hover your mouse over the bottom of your screen for the Q&A feature to, to pop up. Um, I uh, want to echo, I want to take the opportunity to, to echo Joe's um, uh, comments. I, you know, I I learned something, um, and I think it's uh, it's it's really great to to learn more about this uh, amazing um, county that that we live in. Uh, I do see a question from Niz that says, "Will it be possible to get a bachelor's degree at College of Marin?" It's possible in the future that we may head down that road. Um, right now, the rules are that you can the community colleges can only offer a bachelor's degree if there isn't a four-year institution that offers that degree within a certain proximity. Now, the legislature has introduced several bills that will amend those rules, and we are hopeful, particularly around um, nursing and some of the other health professions, but also in other areas as well, that we will have that flexibility moving forward. The good news is that with so many great transfer opportunities nearby, we have localized uh, agreements and MOUs with them to smooth the transfer process. Uh, and increasingly, those four institutions are offering significant online uh, opportunities uh, for that bachelor's degree, which makes it so that folks who are in the county don't necessarily have to travel out of the county to get the bachelor's degree. That's great. Um, we, as you, as you know, obviously we are, we're champions for housing and I appreciate, you know, the programs you have most notably what you mentioned with the, um, uh, fire, firefighting opportunity at the Indian Valley campus for residency. 
where else can we help you? Um, you know, as as we try to figure out both from our our local um, political action as well as just you know in how we deal with homeowners and creating sure. different housing opportunities. How can we help you with the housing yeah. and also on your real estate education program? Yeah, and we do have a, a real estate program uh, at the college. I didn't mention that specifically. Um, I I would say that you know in the housing realm. I think it's also a unique moment in time in Marin County that may not last forever or much longer even. Uh, but when I moved into the county, bought a home 10 years ago, um, the if anyone raised the possibility of, of constructing more housing in Marin, they were sort of shown where 101 was and told to head north or south. It's a very different environment now. And I think that this is another area where the college can play a leadership role um, and, and the support of, of realtors will be important in this. Um, later in March, we will be convening local school districts to have a collective conversation about uh, basically public service uh, provider housing. So not just educators, but primarily educators, but you know, this could be firefighters, others as well. One of the things I mentioned with our, um, with our educator of color pathway, We've done the, the research with Marin Promise Partnership. And if, if so, a typical teacher uh, completes their credentialing and goes into the workforce, if they have no debt associated with that degree, over the first 10 years of their career, they're likely to amass up to $250,000 more dollars than what they would have if they were paying down loans and if they were living at, you know, in, in expensive housing. So our opportunity by looking at how do we provide housing as a collection of educational institutions, a variety of housing uh, in the county makes a huge difference because if I'm a, a, a new teacher earning a base salary and I can afford to live in Marin without taking on massive debt, 10 years later, I can afford a down payment and buy my own home in Marin. Uh, and so that changes the dynamic of what we see dramatically. So for that to happen, we're convening uh, the we have the county is participating, we have the local school districts participating in a conversation, really to ask the question: What if we work together collectively? We each have uh, different assets to bring. I know the college has some land we could build on. The projects are small, which means the cost is higher, which means our ability to make it more affordable for our uh, professors and staff goes down. Uh, but if that project were seen as part of a larger project in conjunction with some other districts, then the, the, the economy of scale would probably make it so that we would have, um, have a real opportunity. There may be opportunities for support for that. Uh, you know, while the conversation of, around housing in Marin has thawed, um, it still gets down to I'm all for it until it's someplace that I don't want it to be, which is most places. Uh, and so we have a lot of work to do on that front, but I do think that um, as educational institutions, um, it's hard for folks to say, no, I don't want my kid's teacher to be able to spend their money in Marin and see my kid outside of class and have that kind of influence and impact. And right now, we don't have a lot of that in Marin because so many uh, folks have to live elsewhere and then they have to commute. And at some point in time, they say, I can't do that anymore and I can't afford to live there. So I'm gonna go elsewhere and we start over. I think we can break that cycle if we work together. And, and that's something that I'm committed to leading that conversation. I don't know how it will play out or where it will go. But I think, again, we're at a moment in Marin where there's enough um, focus on this issue that I think we can make a real difference. I, I agree with you. And we're seeing that as well in our political conversations with our civic leaders throughout the county. Um, it, and I think it does take a lot of collaboration across the board from different agencies, associations, and industries. So uh, keep us on your list as, as part of that conversation. I had a couple other comments. I'll, I'll let Romeo uh, get to, and then and then a couple good questions around, uh, regarding senior education. Uh, yeah, so just want to get through the uh, comments. Uh, got a lot of positive uh, feedback, Dr. Eldridge. Uh, first off, um, Somebody said, thank you so much. This is uh, Matt McPhee. It's an incredible asset to the for the county and certainly appears to be in very good hands for the for the future. Uh, I had uh, Bill McCann say that he needed a parking pass because he's taking a, a course at College of Marin. Just walking through the campus was a great experience. 
uh, lots of energy with uh, from the students. Uh, Sylvia Berry says that uh, she enjoyed the presentation and is uh, happy to see all the progress that College of Marin uh, has made um, and plans to. And she says, uh, including the potential of creating workforce opportunities for those who need it. She says that she personally knows uh, several students who went through College of Marin and were able to get into the CSU and UC systems with two years of lower cost uh, programs, which made uh, the college track much more affordable. Um, and sorry, I just wanted to clarify, she meant workforce housing. Joe, I think you uh, are seeing some of the questions we got in the um, yeah. Q&A. Some of those comments are duplicated. So... I'll, I'll turn it over to Joe for the question about the seniors. Yeah, there's there's been a couple of questions and comments about, you know, senior education. Are the programs available for seniors who like to return to school and kind of what some of the opportunities? So we actually have, um, as I mentioned, not only do we have uh, credit classes for transfer or degree certificate, um, non-credit classes, English language acquisition and a few others. We also have not for credit classes. Those are our community ed classes. And most folks in Marin get mailed a brochure with, with courses. They're usually short form, they're general interest. Um, those are available um, to everyone, but are often geared toward uh, seniors. I would also say too, that we have quite a few seniors who come back and take art classes or uh, science classes or other things just because they're interested. They may take that for credit or they may audit the class. And if there's enough room in the class, you can audit uh, courses to fill in the any empty seats. Um, but we have what's called ESCOM, which is the Emeritus Students of College of Marin. Um, and this is a group designed to um, facilitate not just classes, but also programs, opportunities, socials, lectures, readings, um, you know, chess and bridge, all kinds of things for seniors um, on our two campuses. Um, and we have several thousand members um, of the ESCOM group. Um, and we have several thousand people uh, every semester taking those not-for-credit classes through our community education. Um, and so we're always looking uh, as to uh, what the wants and needs are so that we can meet those. Um, and everything from, you know, how to use the latest technology to how to um, learn um, uh, conversational Italian and everything in between. Uh, and usually those are for a few weekends or a couple uh, uh, you know, a, a few weeks along the way, M much less structured than our um, our traditional academic program. I think I also saw a comment about students with disabilities. We have a wonderful student accessibility services office. Um, students who may have an IEP in high school who have learning disabilities or others um, have found that coming to College of Marin, where we're able to, to make that transition to, from an IEP to the way the ADA works um, and get them accommodations set um, works for them not only here, but then our staff, who are phenomenal, work with them when they transfer to hand that off so that it's seamless. And when they go to a four-year institution, they're able to be successful. Um, so we have, um, I, I've had a number of students tell me um, that they went to other institutions and uh, some very selective private institutions, um, some very expensive institutions. They came back here to take a class or to fill in or because it wasn't right for them. Um, and they, to a person, say that their experience at College of Marin, the size of the classes, the quality of the instruction, the ease of the, the process um, is better than what they've experienced elsewhere. I've had parents tell that to me uh, as well. Um, and so we, we take that seriously and we work hard to make sure that that doesn't change and that we don't slip in those regards, although we can always do better. And whenever there's a complaint out there, I'd like to hear it so we can make sure we fix that. Great. You know, we, we often joke about the University of Kentfield, right? But um, I think uh, as a College of Marin, you provide a broader service to the community than most universities do in their communities. And I don't mean that to them down, but um, it's just remarkable on, on how many areas you cover. And uh, we sure appreciate you. Romeo, are there anything else before we let the good doctor uh, get back we to educating have a lot kids? More, we have a lot more positive feedback. Uh uh, lots of comments on the uh, pool facility uh, and the opportunities uh, for uh, swimmers and people with any limitations. Right. Um, and 
<laughs> Somebody said go University of Kentfield. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, well, uh, you know, we were started out in, in 1926 as Marin Junior College, uh, uh, and then took on the Marin Community College or Marin a College of Marin name a number of years later. Um, but we'll be honoring all of that history and uh, uh, and all of the people who've made the college what it is as we head into our centennial. And um, I'm guessing that there are probably some folks uh, on the call today who either are alums or have family members who have attended the college. And as I said, we want your stories. We'll be reaching out further and welcoming everyone uh, to uh, join us uh, as we celebrate the last hundred years. And and define what we need the next hundred to be uh, for the residents of Marin. So I really appreciate the opportunity. Well, that that we look forward to being a part of that too, and and partnering with you in the future. We, as I said at the beginning, you provide a quality of life to our clients, and and we want to keep that in the forefront. We also want to be a partner in the things you're working on. You know, we've talked about the real estate industry. That is a a broad industry. We have some of the sharpest minds in finance in construction, in property management, in all those areas that can help assist, educate, and and advocate for what you do as well along the way. And one of those is actually our sponsor today, Homa Rizzoli from uh, Omaha Mortgage. Um, so we we have a, a, a an asset pool to tap into as well. And we look forward to partnering with you more in the future. Thank you so much, Dr. Eldridge, for being with us today. Romeo, I'll let you close it up and uh, appreciate what we yeah, had. I, ju I just wanted to say uh, thank you to everybody for attending. Uh, thank you to uh, HOMA for sponsoring. Thank you, Dr. Eldridge. And, you know, I was just thinking and as uh, Dr. Eldridge was talking about the College of Marin Centennial coming up, um, how proud uh, we all were to celebrate the Marin Realtors uh, Centennial. And I just think that it's amazing to have uh, several institutions in uh, this beautiful county um, serving uh, serving the public. And so um, hat, hats off and, and cheers to another hundred uh, College of Marin. Um, I'm going to close the meeting and uh, we hope to have all of this information uh, wrapped up and, and uh, shared with you uh, very soon um, and in the Monday rundown and hope to see you at some of the events that uh, Joe uh, promoted. Thank you.